820 here, Big 550, KTRS. How about a little mermaid to put you to sleep uh, this morning, right? Whole new world. A whole new world. Well, that, of course, from the world of Disney. Gail Pennington here to talk about uh, Disney and other things. Good morning, Gail Pennington. Good morning, McGraw. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning. Uh, so American Experience is doing a 15-part series on the man named Walt Disney? Two-part, four-hour American Experience look at Walt Disney. And here's the thing. You know I'm not the deepest, most intellectual person. I can, I can agree yeah, with that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's really interesting. Uh, it starts from, um, of course, birth. Uh, and did you know that he grew up in Missouri? I did know oh. that he grew up in Missouri. He was born in Chicago, but when he was four years old, his father moved his family uh, to a farm in Marceline, Missouri, which is in north central Missouri, about four hours from us. And, and that was his happiest time of Walt's life, and that's sort of what he tried to achieve in all his movies, this small-town, you know, um, relaxed, charming, um, appealing to families. The, the rumor is that he wanted to open up Disney World here in St. Louis. Um I haven't seen part two, so he hasn't opened Disney World yet. Yes. Uh, but maybe that'll come up. So when we were in Europe... Uh, we went to we were in Copenhagen and there was a sort of a carnival atmosphere called Tivoli. Tivoli, yes. Yeah, and so we went. We had the day free, so we went into this Tivoli, and it was sort of a whimsical. It had a Ferris wheel and it had rides, and a, it was very whimsical. And w so I wanted to find out more about this Tivoli, and it turns out that a man named Walt Disney went there in the '30s and said, "Boy, America needs a place like this." And that's so where that he may have been his inspiration for Disneyland. That's where he he got the idea for Disneyland or World or whatever. Yeah. So there you go. Mm. All right. So what when does that air on um, that American? Is Monday. That's tonight and tomorrow night. Um, two hours each night on, on PBS. All right. Good. That I, I, I like those American experiences. How did you like the first part, Gail? I liked it a lot, and I was watching it on the computer, and the the screen wouldn't expand, so I was watching this tiny little <laughs> rectangle, and I still enjoyed it. So there, so it must be fantastic. All right, fair enough. Well, uh, early early reviews on uh, Stephen Colbert. Um, mixed, hmm. and I think that my review is, and anybody's review would be mixed. When he's good, he's really, really good. Mm -hmm. And uh, but there are times when he's not very good. He's not very good with celebrity interviews. Mm -hmm. mm. I I agree with you seven hundred percent. But he's still finding his way. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you can't judge on four um, episodes, which right. is all he's had four shows. Right. Um, and and he's so used to doing it one way, he has to now try and do it another way. He has to sort of find his find his way. But let's go back to, to Conan. When Conan first started, um, he was terrible. Right. So you just sort of have to figure it out for yourself. But um, I thought his Joe Biden interview was one of the best interviews I've ever heard. I, I thought Joe, Bi but I thought Joe Biden was just so honest and 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 heartfelt. Well, they and, have so much in common. You know, Colbert's right. father and two brothers were killed in right. a plane crash when he was very young. Yeah, it was, uh, it was, if anyone hadn't seen it, I would go back and see it, because it's, yes. it's really interesting. And uh, the online version is longer, so it's even better. Oh, okay, good. Uh, now, what is Neil Patrick Harris doing? Neil Patrick Harris is doing a, show, a, vari a live variety show. Live? Except it's going to be games with the audience and magic and it's a um, variety show yeah and he's got a little child sidekick <laughs> you don't kinda, sound very enthusiastic about kind it of like, <laughs> I haven't kind of like kind of like any of it but i have to tell you this is so not my taste a variety show with neil patrick harris in 2015 People always say, oh, I wish we could go back to the good old days of the Ed Sullivan show. And I don't think that's going to be this because he had big name guests. Ed Sullivan had big name guests who came every week and there have been no guests announced for this. Uh, Neil, mm. is this going to be every week or every two yes. weeks? Yes. <laughs> so here's what's interesting. Neil Patrick Harris basically turned down The Tonight Show after Letterman. Supposedly, rumor was they offered it to him first. He didn't, he didn't want to do it on a daily basis, but he wants to do this variety show once a week? I don't know. I don't get it at all. I don't get NBC. Maybe it'll be fantastic. 
Maybe he's it looking for his... on Tuesday. Maybe but, he... but here's another odd thing. Yes. It's scheduled at 9 p.m., mm. which is 10 p.m. in the east and most of the, of the west coast. Why would you ch- schedule a show like this that's clearly for families to watch together? Well, d- when don't... all the kids are in bed. Well, this is the same argument I have uh, with you with the World Series. Why put the World Series on at 8 o'clock at night? When it doesn't the end World till World Series is for advertisers. Well, I understand that, but I can't no... imagine anyone wanting to advertise on this. <laughs> but I but if, if if the world is asleep at midnight on a Tuesday, why is the World Series on? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a it's a valid point. I just don't think it's going to change. Uh, all right. What the best time ever with Neil Patrick Harris? Yes, Tuesday on NBC. Tuesday on NBC. What's this, the bastard executioner I keep seeing well, commercials for? I, I wrote about this on Sunday, so if anyone wants to read my full account of it, they can get it at STL Today. Um, Kurt Sutter, who did Sons of Anarchy, just ended last spring, came right back and um, has a new show, and, and it's set in 14th century Wales. Oh, that's that's a hot bed. That's a hot bed. <laughs> Isn't it what you would have expected from a guy who did a show about a, a outlaw biker gang in California? Yes, exactly. Yeah, to go to 14th century Wales. It is very. It is the most premium cable extreme uh, content-wise of any show that's ever been on on um, basic cable. Are they trying to do a um, Game of Thrones type? Well, deal? it has a bit of a bit of that in it. It's a little more violent. Yeah. Than uh, Game of Thrones. All right. Um, yeah. I, it's very hard to explain. It's about a soldier who was fighting in a war between Wales and England, and then he put down his weapons. But then something terrible happens, and he has to pick them back up again. And he winds up posing as an execution, a, ro- a roving executioner. But there's also a witch and an angel. Okay. It's like they were just trying to throw all kinds of stuff <laughs> up in there. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. It actually, it's it actually is certainly not going to be everybody's taste, and it's very violent. Has a lot of sexual content, uh, but it's not bad. I mean, it's done well for what it's trying to do. All right. Um, and then uh, Dancing with the Stars Dancing tonight. Dancing with the Stars back tonight. Gary Busey, who um wasn't he already on Dancing with the Stars? He's I don't know. Oh, was he on? Oh, he's on a million uh, can, can, variety. I things. tried to watch. Uh, speaking of bad, really, the Bachelor in Paradise. Oh, I haven't. I luckily it conflicted with other things. Holy mackerel! Watching. It conflicted with me doing anything other than watching that show. That was terrible. Well, it's also four hours a week. I don't. Oh, <laughs> gosh. <laughs> then they. I was. It was the worst. Uh, all right. Four hours a week. Said the person who watches. Three hours a week of Big Brother. So. I don't watch Big Brother. You, you watch Big Brother. I watch Big Brother. Yeah. Okay. Um, when can we read you? When, when, when can we see you, Gail? Friday. I'm going to have a look at uh, conflicting time slots and you know what you might have to not watch to watch something else. And then Sunday, I look at the Emmys and I have an interview with Andy Samberg, who's the host. Oh, mm. all right, good. Oh. And Sunday night on Fox is John Hamm's last chance. To um, win for Mad Men. All right. Well, yeah, but he was beaten out by. Well, we don't have time. But uh, we don't have time. Oh boy. All right. Thanks, Gail. Um, Eight twenty-eight here. Big five fifty KTRS. David Stokes wants to talk about why local control isn't all that it's cracked up to be, depending on which local government you're talking about. And the IRS has announced that they will no longer do this. We'll tell you what it is after.